So welcome to the session on From Navigation to Extravigation. It's going to be presented today by John O'Reilly. John is a senior lecturer in practice as research at the University of Arts London. He's worked in journalism, communications, and trend analysis. And we'll put a link to John's profile on the conference webpage in the chat in case you'd like to learn more. This session will last 30 minutes. It's going to be recorded. Tatiana and I are here to provide support for anyone who needs uh, support. And we encourage you to please enter any questions into the chat window or the Q&A pod so that we can get them answered. Um, and with that, John, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Car Carissa. Can I, um, so if I'm uploading a, um, a um, sorry, a, a PowerPoint, so I do, should, should I just do sh share screen or I mean, how should I? That's exactly right. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. You see desktop. Yeah. Um, sorry, my my Mac. Sorry for the the silence. My Mac no is all sorts of security. Um, so I'm going to allow um Zoom and yeah, do that. I'm going to do might not be able to record the contents of your screen until it's quit um sorry about this um no worries maybe what should i do should i do it later or should i risk coming back in um what what exactly is it saying? Sorry, just saying. My Zoom US may not be able to record the contents of your screen until it's quit. Quit. But actually, you're recording this, aren't you? It's not my screen. We are recording. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine. Yeah. Okay. So now that should do it, and hopefully we can share the share the screen or share the PowerPoint. Um. Which would you which would work better? Share the desktop or share the PowerPoint? If you're only showing your presentation and no other resources, the PowerPoint is perfect. It's fine, cool. And I can still read my notes, can't I? I should be able to read my um, Yes. There we go. So how's that working? Ah, it looks great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks everyone for your patience because not only am I a bit um have been a bit swerved and deviated in terms of the technology. Um I am um I'm 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 solo because I was supposed to be with my um with my colleague um Jamie Brasset, who uh, we wrote a book called um on anticipation. Um, on a creative, the creative philosophy of anticipation, which we edited, didn't write it, we edited it, and we wrote some chapters on it, and we're currently developing a a follow up book, um, which is around anticipation, pedagogy, and diagramming, and um, part of this comes from our our different interests, our our, our kind of twin interests, um, Jamie's particularly coming from a background in futures and anticipation i've come from a background in pedagogy in practice in practice-based research um and more recently in in in, in the issue of 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 of, of uh, futures and anticipation um so a starting point for this talk was a, just a curiosity in the work of Fernand uh, Delini, um, someone he was a someone who w worked with autistic children um, in the nineteen sixties and seventies and eighties, um, part of a, a a culture that culture um, of I suppose a broader culture of anti psychiatry, anti institutional ways of uh, pathologizing people um and 
Delini, one one aspect, you know, one aspect of our curiosity in, in Delini is, is his rejection of, of the normative narratives, the normative storytelling of how to incorporate um, and teach what is considered other and unknown. And obviously that's critical for any um, consideration of an anticipation. How, how do we encounter, how do we address, how do we not... Um, bring um epistemologies to a space to um to which stops us from encountering the general genu genuinely other and the genuinely unknown and so it's not an act of power so mapping diagramming tracing the wandering diagramming itself as the practice of pedagogy um and so the idea that diagramming might be an ontological act might be an act by which we make the space of our encounter and by which we create the rules of our encounter with the world being open to the world so pedagogy and learning in delini delini which we consider the ontological tracing of unimagined existences and becomings versus what he calls uh, what he calls the the um the thought out project this is a, a quote from the book uh, the path of the thought out project it could be could be that this stubborn determination of the human that we are to want to know and recognize only the existence and value of thought out projects is what makes us extravagate that is leave the arachnean path and these images here are are images of of, of tracings of the wanderings of the children um in the the in the i suppose we want a better word the asylum in a in a, in a generous way the older way of what we would have sort of uh, the, 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 this this place that he created in the in the south of france where he worked with with children and his way of and and him and his team, the people that 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 worked with him, one of the ways in which they engaged with um, autistic children was not to um, to find and create different means of um, yeah encounter rather than communication because communication is a, is is an issue and these are these are mappings and tellings of their wanderings in different spaces um so for delini um he wants to reject this idea of the 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 thought the thought the thought out project the 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 i suppose the scaffolding and and planning um by which we encounter the world and which we which stops us from engaging with the unknown and he he uses the word extravagate as a, as the term by which this mapping and diagramming takes place. This stubborn determination of the human that we are to want to know and recognize only the existence and value of thought out projects is what makes us extravagate. That is leave the Arachnean path. Um, so he wants to, in our terms, we're, we're kind of interested in how we encounter the other, otherwise, how we encounter the unknown how we um, avoid the thought out project of futures narrativizing of causalities of predetermined connections with the conventional resources and assets um, and and conventionally mappings and scenario mappings of of um of futures um and i think in a way perhaps we are you know, both myself and Jamie, and I don't mind speaking with Jamie, they said he can't be here. But I think what we might be landing too much on the plate of Delini, but what we're interested in is this, this idea of diagramming of this, of the otherwise as a kind of scholarly curiosity and extravagation, which we're kind of, which we're kind of opposing to navigation is uh these are kind of errant lines and 
errant lines, they're wandering lines, they're one, they're different kinds of, I suppose, non-thinking and non-thought, and perhaps even you might argue nonsense making. And um, they don't make sense. They don't make sense. This, this, the kind of knowledges and practices of this, of the autistic children in this space, they they cannot be mapped by and understood and encountered and normalized with conventional knowledge. So we're kind of making an, a, a kind of analogy here. Um, right. um, and I wonder, it might, it might be, we thought it might be interesting if you have a pen and paper to hand, an A4, a, to, to draw your own errant lines of thinking as you listen and think with the slides, think with me, um, um, and maybe we could share them after alongside uh, any questions. And we were, we were partly drawn to this idea of, of drawing um, as a means of thinking through what our responses to a, to a um, you know, to a presentation might be as opposed to, to you know to q and a thinking about how we might draw how we might draw the lines of our responses of our thinkings and this is from his text the eric name and, and other texts what what would one think of an architect who in his blueprints reserved certain aspects of a structure to be built as spaces for spiders to leave their webs he would be a bit suspect at the very least and it would surely be under his own roof inside his skull that the spiders would be said to dwell. Let him think of heating, lighting, soundproofing, costs, but not about spiders. This does not prevent us from seeing what is wrong here. The thought-out project absorbs everything. And what it cannot absorb, it destroys as inopportune. So we were thinking thinking about this extravagation um, as something, as almost the opposite of the architect who wants to um who wants to create create spaces for wandering but then close them down you know the classic perhaps modernist architect what 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 kind of drawing or mappings might we do that might escape the conventional parameters um of uh, navigational and and um futures thinking what kind of ecology might this this different kind of spider that we're drawing um, with our thinking and diagramming. Um, what kind of ecology might that need? An ecology that we can't predict. Um, so, and I suppose what we're also interested in is thinking about anticipation as allowing a model of the future to cause or create the present, which is how myself and Jamie understand this. Um, and if that's the case, if, if, if anticipation is allowing a model of the future to cause or create the present, then we can imagine that there are untold amounts of futures which impact the present. There are many different kinds of futures that could impact the present. And rather than possibilities branching out, we see branches vectoring in and expressing themselves in a number of pre pre presents, modelled as they are by billions of people's groups, organisations, and so on. So our kind of ways in which we often marshal the future and gather the future and... and, 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 and um, low chart the future and um, perhaps there's different ways in which this a, a a more a more abstracted future a more open future a more diversified future might be possible by thinking with different mechanisms and modes and different non-linear um trajectories and vectors um and famously, supposedly, William Gibson. Sometimes it's you know, no one can find this this uh, this direct quote. William Gibson, the science fiction author, um, famously he said, "The future's here; it's just unevenly distributed." Um, 
and in a way this what you know what we would think of, of, about about this i mean one of the things about futures is that often the tradition and history of future studies itself has been concentrated among you know among big corporations among agencies perhaps more recently among policy makers around governments um, and very much a kind of top down and 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 technical and and very useful exercise but also perhaps limited um by um its own um habitus to use a you know a word from Bourdieu. um so it's so according to, to, to science fiction writer the future is here it's just unevenly distributed um um and so how would we redistribute it? It would require us to, to negotiate an array of clumping futures that have been coalesced and organized and ring-fenced and defended and monetized by various groups unwilling to allow most of us to access these futures. Um, so that you know there is a whole discourse of futures, a narrative of futures, a, a mechanisms of futures, institutions of futures, uh, corporations and consultancies and literacies, um, but these they're, they're they're not distributed. We might argue, call, calling from 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 Gibson, um, and so I guess one of our concerns, and my concerns, thinking about pedagogy, um, is that well, what is the task of the of of, of the future of the of the sorry the university, um in 2023 um given the state of our planet state of our world well the task of a university more than ever this is written in 1938 by the philosopher alfred north whitehead the task of a university is the creation of a future um and pedagogically speaking following whitehead we see our students as already modeling their futures so their presence are already becoming graduates um and this means that the university, ideally speaking, perhaps, is a thing created by the future, by everyone's futures, by the futures that are being created and imagined. And we know this when we talk to our students, our, 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 the, the, the energy and the excitement and, and capacity for um, you know, escaping the, 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 the frameworks and perhaps the learning outcomes which which we teach them with and there's it's there for a reason but our, st our students their their futures their, their their futures are much more than that they exceed that they extravagate the navigation the pedagogic navigations provided by the institution of the university so an anticipatory pedagogy would be one that encourages a complex eruption of futures into the overlapping presence of the classroom of the studio of the lecture hall and the like um and thinking about these, this, this, the classroom and where the classroom might happen and how it happens in the space of the classroom. Um, this is a just a from Elizabeth Ellsworth, who who's written on educational educational spaces. Um, American academic pedagogy stages encounters with the unthought, encounters with the futures as in the making. And I think there's something, this is where pedagogy begins to matter and ped pedagogy for us and thinking of pedagogy and teaching as, and what we might learn from education and pedagogy and teaching to insert it into the, um, or at least to create an encounter, not just with the unthought, but with the, with the practices of future planning, future scenarios, policy making. Um, and this this on thought is very different to that classical, um, I guess, originary idea of 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 the unthinkable in 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 um, the work of Kahn in in the nineteen sixties in 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 in, the, in in his work on 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 uh, nuclear war and uh, the different kinds of the unthought and different kinds of versus the unthinkable. Um, the unimaginable um 
a future that has kind of been been generated by the resources and assets and thinking and trajectories and narratives um, of our futures, institutions and policymakers. Um, and that's really it. That was it's it's just a it's a provocation, a proposition, an idea of how we might think and uh, encounter the otherwise and the unknown, the unthought and uh, the, the mechanisms, mechanisms which we might need to to avoid and the mechanisms which you might need to embrace. Um, and that's it. So thank you. Maybe I can. And, uh, well done. Uh, what advice would you have for educators who are um, who are at the helm of trying to facilitate this this change in university approaches? Um, I think um, part of me thinks there's that there's that quote, Caressa, back. Um, at the, well, actually, just going back, there's a quote from the in the, the, the proposal that we had um, around the idea of the narratocracy um, mm. in our proposition uh, from, I think, uh, David Kinigia. And I think a starting point, and I think one of the things that we're quite, quite good in our, our art and design school is um, developing and uh, having having spent the last 20 minutes being anti-strategic perhaps um i would I, I would suggest finding strategies which might um help us dis dislocate ourselves and relocate ourselves from from our conventional epistemologies so i mean at any starting point i was talking talking to jamie about a tv series um um, on Netflix called Bodies, which is which has just been, um, which has just been released, and thinking about thinking about how we um, how we connect and disconnect um, from our conventional knowledges, and and in a sense, our starting point, our starting point is is almost just just as futures might be about generating counters with the unknown our starting point might be developing strategies of unknowing how do we unknow mm -hmm. the epistemologies and ontologies which has which have got us to this place one of the things in in the chapter in the book i wrote with jamie that, that i was struck by was was um you know again quite rightly and and all the work that 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 futures experts do is so interesting and 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 can be so exciting and can deliver things but uh, one of the things i lo looked at was was the work of um or, or noted was the work of pierre watt for example in in the 70s and and the the work with shell and and okay. the the predictive quality of his work that everyone got everyone was so excited about this and obviously at the time and one of the things i write about my, my, my chapter is there were other kinds of knowledges and there were knowledges of um of feminists there were knowledges of um of indigenous people who were already and not and knowledges of people in the west coast of america i suppose hippies and um, knowledges of people who understood already that we were heading to climate catastrophe so on the one hand you have a very um technocratic and professionalized and 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 and, and um well-trained bunch of futures experts now on the other hand you have different kinds of knowledges that were not normative and perhaps even considered pathological in some ways and mm. odd and peculiar and weird and and who might we have listened to i wonder for example and i and i think that's just, that's just, that's almost a starting point for 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 um for me in big or the question that sits around any strategies that we would want to bring to with with clients or in the classroom um, if that makes sense absolutely uh, thank you for that uh have we any if we john would you mind 
uh, sharing your email address in the chat, just so that folks can actually, I see it on that last screen you had there. Uh, please disregard, you've already shared it. Oh, I have. So okay. uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. It was on the last screen of your presentation. Um, appreciate it. Thank you. And if anybody wants to send any um, strange drawings of, um, you know, swirly mm -hmm. thoughts, swirly emotions, odd kind of gatherings of random thoughts, I would love to see them. And maybe we could put together a collage of um, of abstract thinking uh, of futures. Beautiful. All right. Thank so, you so much, John. Thank you. And, and, and apologies again for the tech and uh, the solo ah, uh, running. You, but um, you, you aren't alone. Okay. It's been the theme of the day. <laughs> okay. Thanks a million, both of you. Very good. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.